Hey everyone, it's Stevio. Welcome back. Welcome back. So, slightly off character here. So, if you like the this video, I slightly messed with my uh, sensitivity and my movement speed and all that. If you like this speed or you want it to go back to the way it used to be, just let me know. Also, I end up I'm speaking more into all my videos. I'm talking more basically. If you like that, let me know. If you don't, let me know. Just remember, be nice. Because, you know, being nice is just good for the world. And be nice to somebody else. Pay that stuff forward. Because a simple act of kindness goes a long way, no matter how cliche it sounds. So let's get back to it. So yesterday, I told you I was going to go show you the new field we bought, and I never did it. That was wrong of me. So I will go show you that field. Also, I think I got a great deal, possibly on a uh, spare round baler I could get. So I'm going to go look at that too. And we got to get our soybeans planted. I need to go see what the weather is going to be like today. So let's go see here. Okay, looks like it's good planting weather to me. Let's see what they predict. Yep, they say it's good soybean planting weather. So let's get to it. What's up, Buck Buddy? I'd like to see you out running again, huh? You like this hot weather? I do too. So it looks like we left our sprayer out in the field. We need to fix that. Can't be leaving that thing out in the field. So I'm gonna go put that away quickly and then uh, I'll go grab the bobcat and show you this new field. So we're just gonna back this in here right where we got it. We did still did not get the alternator in for our Alice Chalmers, so that is still broke down, unfortunately. But we'll get it fixed one of these days. So I'm just looking at this. So I used to pull these trailers around a lot when I was younger, and it just looks off in size. I'm pretty sure these thousand gallon trailers which are pretty common you can get these from most co-ops most fertilizer dealers uh, you can find them some farmers have them for their own use uh, it just seems, seems kind of small it seems like it's a little bit too small I don't know why but we must have a miniature thousand gallon fertilizer trailer all right, so I got bags of seed in this truck and I need to get them into our garage. So I'm gonna have to open this up. That's like an old fashioned door. It rolls up one piece, not multiple doors that hinge. It's all right, all works the same. Need to park this inside so we don't get our seed wet. It's, ooh, looks like we bumped our or a little ladder there. We make it? Yeah, we did. All right, we'll open up this door. Jump in our bobcat because I need to show you the field we bought. Make sure we don't run over Buck. Watch out, Buck. So you might be noticing a little bit of lag. So thank you, farming. So you might be noticing a little bit of lag. So thanks to Giants and their recent patch, it always does this for every single patch they have. For whatever reason, you have to play the game about three to four hours before it stops lagging. So I don't know if everything just needs to be refocused into the game, but just a little bit annoying wish they would stop bringing out so many patches so run down here love this drive down here so this beautiful little pond area over there just beautiful we just have to go through a few gates to get to this field we don't have no cows out in this part yet so that's good so we can also look at our hay. Looks like it's still... We want it a little bit higher before we start cutting this. So this is going to be one of our grass fields right here beside us. And then... 
this field right here. Oh no. I just noticed something. He said this was planted with barley. This isn't barley there. This is potatoes. This is not good. So we don't have a way to harvest potatoes or will we have a way here anytime soon so uh, guess we're gonna need to plant this one too so yeah that's an extra task we need to do this spring that's for sure so hmm that's a bummer Even though this wasn't planted like barley, like he said, we still bought it for $250,000. So uh, a little bit of a steep price, but it's really convenient to our place here. Uh, I just love the scenic view of this field, which really doesn't really help the crops much, but I guess it makes us feel better when we're farming it. Just love the little stream here. Got that nice watery sound. The water flowing. So nice and relaxing. It's unfortunate that's not planted with barley, but we can still fix it. We'll just end up leaving these uh, gates open. We don't actually have cattle down here. So we will have to end up going down there with the uh, tillage tractor. So we're gonna run over here, grab the truck, and go look at this baler. One of the local area farmers is selling. I guess I parked my truck inside the garage. I'm gonna have to get that back out of the garage. So being as it's not gonna rain today, we could just drive with the bags of seed on the back here, so we it should be all right. We're gonna run down here uh, I think this guy is selling a Vermeer round baler, so don't see many of them around here, so I'm pretty interested to see how it looks. So we're just going by the local John Deere dealer here. So it's, I think he says he's just right here close. Take a left by the sheep farm. Okay, this is it. Where's the baler? Pretty sure this is it. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's kind of cool. Wow, look at this. So I've been wanting one of these for a while. Finally got one of a mirror. So this is a 605M. It's a DCF wide pickup. Looks pretty nice. Nothing uh, too extravagant about it. Looks like it's a uh, bale wrap too, not twine. Or is there twine too? So I don't know if this is a twine also. So that might be a twine box actually, that right there. But I know it's bale wrap. That's actually kind of small, so it might just be a bale wrap only uh, Vermeer baler. Pretty nice. So this is a Vermeer belt round baler. So I've been looking eyeing one of these for a while. So we're gonna consider buying this, purchasing this from them, because I think it's smart to have a backup round baler because we are going to be doing a lot of hay. Okay, let's go see if we can seal this deal. Alright, so we are the owners. $10,000 we got it bought. So it's fairly good shape. So he did say there's about 900 bales ran through it. So that's fair. So, I mean, I've known some 5,000 bale balers and probably even well above that so it still has some life in them bearings and them belts but I think let's get this thing home we shouldn't have too much of an issue pulling this old home 
Now, am I going to be able to just back this up? Or am I going to have to go forward a few times? Uh, let's see, is that good enough? Not even close. Alright, now we'll hook that up. Make sure these are... Our pickup is locked up. Alright. So, think nothing's going to hit clearance-wise. Make sure the PTO is nice and wrapped up so it don't dangle on the ground. All the hydraulic lines, we're good to go. So we'll have to take it a little bit slow. We'll put our blinkers on right now, actually. Don't know... Oh, yeah. That's going to be an issue. I don't think our blinker is going to show on on the around the baler. So, well, uh, hopefully the cops don't pull us over on this road. So, we'll take the back way home. So, this baler's running a little wide for these streets. That's one complaint I have of this area. They got some real narrow streets down these roads. Not very farm equipment convenient, that's for sure. Oh, that guy pulled off. He was a little worried with our wide baler, that's for sure. So this field right in front of us is actually the field that we are going to plant with soybeans. So we did just spray that, put a little pre-fertilizer emergence down on it. So now we are going to uh, plant it. Our cousin actually uh, chiseled that ground too, so looks like she did a pretty good job. She did miss some areas over there on the corners. And I think we'll have to forgive her. She's family. See them areas right there? Yeah, she missed them. Oh well. So let's see. Where do I want to put this baler? I think we'll put it over there by with our chopper. Probably be a good place for it. So let's see. I think I have room in this. We'll have to open the door and see. Hmm. hmm. Well, I, I guess I can park it right here. We won't have to change out this header very often, so I can just park it right here and then move it. We have to end up putting that on the chopper. All right, so we will park that right there. So, yep, just got it close enough. I guess we don't need our blinkers here at the farmyard. Close that door. Now we'll just have to park this in the garage again. Shut that door. All right, so now I want to get the planters hooked up. So this looks like a good job for the 4250. What do you guys think? I've been wanting to use this 4250 for another job on the farm. I think this will work perfect pulling them planters. So we are actually going to use our drill planters to plant our soybeans. Uh, so we need to get them backed up. I think. There we go. I'm close enough. Is that close enough for a hookup? Yep. Hook up the hydraulic hoses. Alright. So thing is, got to make sure all the hydraulic hoses are hooked up and all the planters are hooked up. Otherwise, these things don't pull very well. It means that they don't pick up all the way, so you're going to have some issues pulling them. Alright, so let's pull this over here by the garage. Then we're going to have to calibrate this uh, these drills for uh, soybeans. There we go. It looks like close enough for all the tools. The only thing you really have to do with these uh, drills now that we've got the top open is uh, adjust the seed fills there. So that should be ready for soybeans, all three of them. 
So we'll shut this tractor off. I can't believe I almost completely forgot to go pick up some seed. Such a dummy. Alright, so let's get our truck out again. Run to the store quickly. So that's actually corn seed in there, so we're going to need some soybeans and some fertilizer. So we'll run to the store. So we're just pulling out of this the co-op here, the seed store. You would not believe how expensive this seed is. So this is $16,000 you're seeing here on this trailer. 16. So seed is not cheap. So we definitely need to conserve it and make sure we are not wasting it, that's for sure. Alright, so we're finally back and ready to start planting. We'll just pull this uh, trailer right alongside this planter. Start filling this planter up. Alright, we finally got all these drills filled up. So, each of them have soybeans in them. Soybeans are big seeds, so they took a whole pallet and about a half. Took about a pallet and a half of fertilizer too, so we are definitely going to put a lot of money in this field. So now, so I've never used the, this drill before, so I'm going to have to figure out exactly how I use it. So let's hope I can figure this out. I'm not sure exactly how to get these things extended. Alright, so I think I figured it out. First, I gotta unhitch these though. Oh, alright, gotta detach the hoses first. So the trick is. Oh, oh, wait. I probably should pull it forward, then unhook the back one. So I'll, actually, I'll unhook this one. There we go, unhook the hose. I'll rehook this one. Rehook the hose, pull it forward far enough so I'll, then I'll be able to extend and still back up to both of them. So after that, I need to extend these, uh, these hitches out. So I'll need to pull these out and put the pins in. All right, so now I got each of these pulled out and put the pins in, hopefully. So now I need to pull each of these over. So I backed up over to this one. Try to uh, uh, move it over just a little bit. There we go. All right, got that one hooked up. Now we'll back up to the other one here. All right, that's somewhat close. Let's try to put nudge it over just a little. There we go. Just a little. Alright, got that one hooked up. Got the hoses hooked up. So I think we are finally ready to go. So this thing is wide. So we can take a big swath with these planters. So we'll go get them around. The only thing is you gotta take some big turns, that's for sure. And that inside one really turns weird, doesn't it? So we gotta lower that one, turn it on. All right, now they're all turned on finally. See this, so the only real hard part is knowing where to plant at. Woo! These planters take quite a bit of horsepower. I don't know, maybe this 4250 doesn't have enough horsepower for these old planters. Might have to get the 4440 out. I uh, was hoping I could plant with this tractor. But it might just be a little bit too underpowered. We'll see how it does, but this field definitely has some bigger heels in it. So I don't know if this tractor will be able to take these hills. I guess we do have a slight incline right after we get down over here by our uh, cabin. Oh, 
Oh, come on, girl. Oh, man. I'm gonna have to soup this tractor up or something. Uh, this is a bummer. So I may have to get the case tractor out over here. Hoping not I could plant with the John Deere's. Thought the John Deere's would look good on the John Deere uh, drills. Looks like we are a little underpowered, so... Uh, before we blow up this engine, let's uh, unhook this and go get the, the case tractor. I'm really disappointed. That's a bummer. I was hoping to use this 4250. I really like this uh, tractor. But we'll get this put away quickly and then we'll go grab our uh, case tractor. Think that'll be enough power? Otherwise, we might have to get our articulator tractor fixed just so we can pull these drills. I was not expecting them to use that much horsepower, that's for sure. Don't worry, girl. We'll find a good use for you soon. So, unfortunately, now we're going to have to unhook our uh, row crop planter here. Unhook that. Start this up. We did fix the muffler slightly on this thing, so I'm really curious on how it sounds. So, did mess with the sound a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's way nicer. It's not quite as loud. A little bit loud. So, the case is only bailing out the John Deere because... It's a higher horsepower tractor. It's a little bit newer. So that's the only reason. John Deere is not getting beat by the case here. Back this tractor up here quickly and get these planters hooked up. All right, we got them hooked up. Let's turn them all on now. So surprisingly, this this case isn't even pulling it much better. So this case is having a lot of trouble pulling this. So maybe these uh, tractors are closer in the horsepower than what I actually thought. I'm really hoping it gets up this hill because that might be an issue. Uh-oh. Can't get up this hill here, then we are going to have some problems. Man. I don't know. This is going to take us forever going at four mile an hour. That is not a uh, great land speed for planting, that's for sure. Wow. That is... Uh, little slow unfortunately this between the 8250 and the 4440 and this case they're all about the same horsepower 4440 might have a little the most horsepower but it's not much like I don't oh man come on you can do it Look at this thing struggle, man. Them tires are just slipping. Look at them. Keep going. Wow, I can't believe it. I mean, this... You can hear this tractor. It is really bogging down. So this is a really steep hill right here. That's for sure. Wow. Oh, man, we are going to land speed record of three mile an hour. I don't know. So I wasn't really expecting these uh, drills to be pulled this hard. You know, I was thinking, I mean, drills really don't take that much horsepower. I, I don't know why these three drills are pulling so hard. 
really hope we don't have bearings going out of the disc or something like that because drills are usually not a high horsepower requirement especially if you already have a cultivated field that you're drilling into so all it is is a uh, soil splitting two disc and then it just drops a seed right behind it doesn't do much it's more like a vertical tillage than anything else so I'm really surprised that this case or the John Deere can't pull it but I don't know I think I may have to ask Farmer Jim if we could possibly borrow one of his tractors don't know hopefully Farmer Jim is feeling generous today and he uh, allows us to borrow a tractor but once we get to the end of the field here I'll call him up and see if he can help us out here because I don't know if I can take going four mile an hour around this whole in this whole field here that's for sure all right so I just called Farmer Jim he said we could borrow his brand new his newest tractor so he said it's not a big deal, that, but I'll have to help him out, that's for sure, in the near future. Shut this off. Alright, so we need to go park this case really quickly. Then I gotta jump in my truck really quick and run it down to Jim's, grab one of his tractors. I hate to ask Jim this big of a favor, but... I mean, we really want to use the drill to put in the soybeans, and I have no idea why them drills are taking that much horsepower. That should not take more than the horsepower the John Deere or that case has, that's for sure. Alright, so Jim said we can borrow his 84, his 8345R. Open up this door here. So this can't pull it we got some major issues that's for sure wow this is way nicer in our case that's for sure Woo. even smells new in this cab back up a little bit we just barely didn't make it there we go So we will just get this headed down the road really quick because we need to get them soybeans planted. You know what? It's almost noon. We just passed the taco place. Let's ta stop and get us a nice taco here quickly. I mean, that's what you do with the tractor. Stops by the little taco, the little taco truck or the taco wagon this is. Hmm. Let's get a uh, chicken fajita. Closed. Closed. Away on Giants form, Naggy Mac makers. Oh, that's rude. Oh, man. The taco wagon's closed. Bummer. Guess that means that we are going to starve here for a little while. But at least we are starving in comfort here in this nice cab. This cab really takes these bumps with ease with the suspension seat, suspension cab, suspension front end over there. Alright, so we just got this tractor back here. Let's get it hooked up. Alright, so everything should be hooked up, right? Yep. Oh yeah. Wow, this tractor has no problem. Wow, this is a huge difference. So basically, we went from a very slow job to a fast job. We're definitely gonna owe Jim for this. So, let's see, how, how many year difference would this tractor be? So this is a... 2016 or 2018 can't remember maybe it's a 2018 so that would be uh, 
When was uh, 7210 made? About the 90s, 95, let's say. I'm, I might be a little bit off. It might be 98. So, about a 20 year difference. So, this is basically what 20 years does in farming. Imagine another 20 years from today. Are we even going to be driving in the tractor cabs? Or are we just going to be moving around automated tractors? planting along here so we are making great time with this field so it's taking us hardly any time whatsoever so the soil temps about 57 it's about 74 yeah short weather that's for sure uh, all three planters no issues yet other than they are pulling extremely hard for some reason really nice that we have GPS in this tractor it really makes it easy doing the turns doing everything so we still have about 26 bushel in these planters so we might have to even out eat all the planters but I do have some more bags of seeds so I think we would will finish the field but it's going to be kind of close because Soybeans, it takes a lot of bag of seed. Most people use a seed tetter for their soybeans because it's just so much, especially if you're going to air drill them in or use a drill like we are using. A lot of birds out in the field today. So beautiful day here, a little bit of cloud cover, not too much sun yet. See our cows off there in the distance, they look like they're doing good. This is a good thing about having GPS, you don't really have to focus on driving. All you kind of have to do is uh, put the planter up, put it down. So this John Deere actually has a sequence button so you could sequence it to all the controls so we have all six hydraulics we have all three hydraulic planers they raise up at the end of the field the John Deere downshifts at the end of the field and then we turn the John Deere and then the John Deere slowly puts all three hydraulic down which starts the planters and then we take off again a little bit of technology with the old technology of these drills that have been around for years that's for sure it's like we got a few weeds growing in our cornfield over there we're gonna have to spray them down maybe we could just spot spray to make it less cost more cost effective for us might just do that with our bobcat all right so we just finished that field so i think we did a pretty good job with the drill really impressed so this john deere with this gps really helped us out so now we got to get this drill all lined up again so we'll stop the tractor here uh, so we need to unhook this drill. Oh, got to unhook the hoses first. There we go. And then unhook this drill too. 
And then we gotta slide these in. Okay, so now we got these arms slid in there. So now we have the troubling task of backing up these planters. That's not the easiest. All right, hook that up. There we go. Finally got all them things hooked up. So now... So now we got them all hooked up, we'll get them under the overhang there quickly and then go take Farmer Jim's tractor back. So now's the question, can we catch up to this track, to the station wagon in front of us before we hit Jim's farm here? I don't know, I don't think we're gaining quick enough here. Well, surprisingly the station wagon is going probably about 30 mile an hour. Maybe if we stay on the hardened surface here, we can catch up. Nope, don't think we're gonna get it to it. Maybe we'll, we'll take the shortcut. Means there's no cars coming. Nope, not gonna catch up. Think that car is going about the exact same speed we are. All right. Parked the tractor all there nicely, like we never used it. Cleaned it up nice, too. Shut that door. All right. Jim said he will probably need our help tomorrow, so we will have to do some tillage or some planting. One of the two are getting the planters ready. But we're definitely going to have to help him out now. That he let us borrow his tractor. Now all we have to do is park this again in the shop the garage so hopefully this will be the last time we actually park this in our little uh, garage for tonight shut that off I think let's go play fetch with Buck here come on Buck let's play fetch come on where'd you go you don't want to play fetch no oh do you need fed Buck all right, I'll feed you. All right, everyone. Thank you for watching, and I will see you later here in Oregon. Thank you all for watching. Like, comment, and share, and subscribe. See you next time.